tonight on Destinations. Hi, I'm Army Sergeant Lori Gilchrist. This may look like a state fair in the U.S., but it's not. We'll explain on Destinations. Hey, let's face it, you can find a pizza anywhere in Italy, but you can only find a margarita, the original kind, at this restaurant in downtown Naples. Well, good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us here tonight on Destinations. I'm your host, Kane Fairbaugh. The saga of several young Würzburg musicians continues tonight here on Destinations. Hundreds of students took part in the Dodds Annual Honors Music Festival in Bad Kissingen, Germany. Specialist Scott Cole reports tonight on their journey from the practice rooms to the stage. Music. It's a universal language that transcends cultural barriers and unites those who have come to appreciate it and those who seek to perform it. The best of the best Dodd student musicians from across Europe came together in Bad Kissingen, Germany to rehearse for the first time in anticipation of their concert debut. In Würzburg, we just had, I just have my brother to work with and here we have 80 other voices to work with and everyone knows what they're doing. It's really, it's really cool. I really like the sectionals because we get to play our own parts and we don't have to wait for all the slow brass <laughs> to catch up. <laughs> the woodwinds move, so we really get to um, specialize on our instruments. They had three days to get to know each other and the music they would learn to play on their big night. You really have to be in shape to be able to play for three days all day, so it's, it's, it's very exhausting. We've been able to bring some pieces together really well and it took a really good Wednesday. It took time, it took patience, and it took pride. The students rehearsed non-stop to make sure they could create something special. Each new conductor brought their own style. You really have to be able to watch and not get used to one director's style because otherwise you can't play the rest of the music. You have to get used to them for that piece, and it kind of gives it a new flair for how the piece would go. It's a lot more fun. They've studied and practiced, and now they're ready to take the stage for the performance of a lifetime. We all know what we're doing. We all have a general idea of how the music goes, and we'll be ready tomorrow night. Specialist Scott Cole, AFN News. We'll wrap up our look at the Music Fest next week here on Destinations. Spring is in the air, and as more and more people shed cabin fever, they're looking for things to do. Festivals like the Dip and Mess in Frankfurt are popular destinations, and Army Sergeant Lori Gilchrist shows us why. Thanks, Kane. This is how Dip and Mess started. Hundreds of years ago, people would come from all over Germany to buy and sell things for their home. Now, things have changed. Now there are other ways to spend your money. For some people, fun is serious business. Slingshot. 
You won't get me on that thing. Someone with some skills. Sabrosura. One thing's for sure there's lots of food. Hmm, I'm kind of hungry. Tried to amend my carnivorous habits. Made an L7. Mmm, yummy. Losing way without speed eating sunflower seeds. You know what else? There's candy. What's a fair without candy? Wonderful dreams. Some kind of sensuous treat. Not zucchini, but a genie. Bulgur wheat. Well, this place has really gone to the dogs. Time to go. For Destinations, I'm Army Sergeant Lori Gilchrist, Frankfurt, Germany. The Dipper Mess ended with a fireworks show Sunday night. And if you couldn't catch the festival in Frankfurt this year, don't worry. It's an annual event that comes back here next spring. Well, we move now from the festival to the field. The football field, that is. And this weekend, the Frankfurt Galaxy kicked off a new season in a nail-biting match against the Berlin Thunder. Specialist Stephen Roach shows us some of the pre-game and post-game action right from the sidelines. It's been a while, let's put it that way, it's been a while. You guys saw it, it was an awesome game. And that's what he is, he's a great team player. Ready to go. Just a night, another night at the old ballpark. This was my 11th opening night as a head coach. This fact, but I'm 0 10 and 1. I've never won an opening night. As a head coach, I've never won. If you didn't get a chance to catch the Galaxy's home opener against the Berlin Thunder, then tune in to Destinations next Thursday. Destination Barcelona is our next stop with the Frankfurt Galaxy on their first road game this season. Destination Barcelona airs next Thursday, and the Frankfurt Galaxy returns home. April 27th for Armed Forces Appreciation Day. Tickets are 11 euro and you can get more information by visiting your local USO office. Well, it's still a little early to hit the beach to catch some rays, especially if you're stationed in Belgium. But Army Sergeant Doug Boyle shows us even if the coastal towns aren't that warm, there's still plenty to do. Thanks, Kane. You know, if you're headed to England by sea, one of the places you can leave from is Ostend, Belgium. Now, we're not going to hit the high seas this week, but we are going to check out one of the cool things you can do in Ostend, and that is to tour ships. And I'm not talking the SS Minnow here, either. You may think it's a mirage when you first arrive in Ostend, but it's there, floating in a harbor as you enter the city. It's named the Mercator, a 1932 training vessel used by the Belgian Merchant Navy. Now, the Mercator is not just floating, it's a floating museum as well. If you come down below decks, there's tons of exhibits that explore the history of this ship. Built in Scotland, she sailed until 1961 and has seen places we've only read about, from service in World War II to Easter Island. Almost the best site in the uh, east coast of Africa, South America, east coast, west coast. Uh, she did a lot of, quite a lot of uh, miles. Also below decks, you can see how the sailors lived. Now, there's no one sleeping here right now, but that's not always the case. The Mercator is now a Belgian national monument, but that doesn't mean she doesn't leave Ostend on occasion. 
It's still saleable in that point that uh, this year we'll uh, receive the new sales. It's uh, Duradon sales and uh, it's uh, uh, 1,385 cubic meters of sales. Later this year, the Mercator will head to Bruges for some festivities in August, and next year she'll be evaluated for a possible voyage to France. So tour her now while you can. Army Sergeant Doug Boyles for Destinations. Stay tuned to Destinations Cause coming up. We have this uh, cooking class because it offers the spouses an excellent tool to adapt to this new culture. For more than 50 years now, the America House in Frankfurt has served the German-American community with information and services about American politics, culture, and business. And as we'll learn in our destination interview this evening, the American forces play a key role in the America House activities. Gary Bottel is in our studios now with more tonight. Gary? Thank you, Kane. With us today is Mr. David Farrar. He is the director of the America House and also the public affairs officer for the consulate here in Frankfurt. But it's the America House we want to talk about today. Uh, the America House is a unique place. I mean, uh, there aren't any America Häuser or America Houses in, uh, in other countries. No, Gary, and uh, of course, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak with your audience on AFN. The America Häuser are pretty unique to Germany. Obviously, a, uh, a development of post-war Germany in which there were approximately 50 America Häuser in the important cities in West Germany and a number of American reading rooms. Uh, most of the America houses began as smaller reading rooms. Uh, your services have been expanded beyond just reading rooms. You've got a pretty good-sized library. You've got all kinds of services offered to the German and the American public, right? Certainly. Um, at this time, I would say that our library, which has been renamed and retooled as an information resource center, is the most sophisticated, best source for information about the United States um, here in Germany. And uh, we think that we can provide our contacts, our journalists, uh, academics, students, uh, think tankers, anything they need to know about the United States. Uh, if it's important about the United States, we have it there. Your offices are, are involved in a lot of uh, joint U.S. military, German-American mm -hmm. events, correct? Well, we're blessed in our uh, consular region of the four states of rhineland pfalz Hessen, Baden-Württemberg, and Saarland. Uh, with the major U.S. military commands in Europe, with UCOM, USER, and USAFI. And uh, we've been working with them and with the G Frankfurt Galaxy organization, for example, on, the, on this year's second annual tribute to German-American forces, to the armed forces. And put four people behind two guys. And, uh, what's very interesting about this particular year is that in the wake of September 11th, the National Football League, which runs the the league here in Germany with the Frankfurt Galaxy and the Berlin Thunder, for example, and the, uh, the rhine main fire up in the Dusseldorf area, mm -hmm. these uh, clubs. The, uh, the NFL has really reached out to the military. This upcoming uh, Armed Forces Day celebration before the Galaxy game, what day is it? On That's uh, Saturday, April 27th. Begins with a tailgate party um, right outside the stadium at, uh, at about noon. And of course, the Galaxy ticket is um, 11 euros that's uh, for military members through USO and that's a very very big reduction and that also provides access to uh, entrance free entrance to the the power party which begins at, at 1600 sponsored by the galaxy itself and that provides events uh, food entertainment of course you as uh, AFN will be there broadcasting live uh, uh, from that power party and then of course the game begins at 1900 and these are these are great games Members of our audience who are interested in political discussions, art displays, music uh, presentations from jazz to, to, to classical, the America House has a lot of offers in that area too, doesn't it? Yes. Uh, generally speaking, we, we concentrate on politics, economics, and literature, American literature, because when it comes to American music or American theater, American film, um, American television, there's enough of that to be seen here in Frankfurt, one of Europe's most international cities. But uh, we do have a, an ongoing exhibition program of three or four shows per year at the America House in our exhibition space, usually photography of the United States, but not always. Uh, we sponsor generally three or four 
music events a year. Oh, the America House is live and well. Our budgets are stable, if not increasing slightly. Our staffing is uh, stable. And uh, we're having, as we speak, uh, the roof is being replaced for the first time. And we've had some enhancements um, in the interior spaces in the last year and a half. And uh, we've had a widening of our terrace and some um, purchases of, um, of equipment for uh, outdoor programming when and if we, uh, the rain ever stops. Mr. Perot, thank you very much for being with us today on Destination. Thank you. Always a pleasure to talk with your AFN audience. Thank you, Gary. Next week on Destinations, we're hitting the road with the Frankfurt Galaxy. Get ready for some football as the Frankfurt Galaxy takes on the Barcelona Dragons. Don't miss Destination Barcelona, 6.30 p.m. on AFN Europe. Hop on the bus, everyone. We're heading to Italy now for a look at the menu. And our first stop is Naples and a chance to catch an inside look at what goes into making a special kind of pizza. Air Force Sergeant Gary Piccarello shows us how the most popular pizza might look simple, but there's more to the pie than just cheese and sauce. The Brandy Pizzeria sits on a nondescript side street in downtown Naples, as it has since its humble beginnings in 1780. Grazie. Hey, let's face it, you can find a pizza anywhere in Italy, but you can only find a margarita, the original kind, at this restaurant in downtown Naples. While the pizzeria has been in operation since the late 1700s, its real claim to fame began in 1889 with a request from Italy's royal family and its queen. Allora, cosa successe? Che Raffaele Esposito sposata una Brandi. In June of 1889, the original owner of Brandy's, Raffaella Esposito, received a visit from a representative of the royal household, requesting that he visit the royal palace of Capodimonte in Naples to prepare some pizzas for the queen. The rest, as they say, is history. The queen ate several pizzas during that visit, but showed a particular liking for the simplest pie of all. The pizza made with only mozzarella, tomatoes, and a pinch of salt. Pizza Napolitano has always been known as a poor man's food and a rich man's guilty pleasure. So when word spread that the queen liked this particular pizza, word spread fast. And soon everyone wanted to eat this tasty pie enjoyed and named after the queen, now referred to as the pizza margarita. Says Vincenzo Pagnani, the latest patriarch to the brandy lineage, these days, everyone makes pizza in every way, in all of Italy. All over the world, in fact, you can find a pizza margarita. Ma la pizza margarita non è come la vendo in altri posti. La pizza margarita è come la facciamo noi qua, in questa pizzeria. The chef prepares the dough and lets it sit for about 12 hours, because only he knows when it's ready. It's a feeling he develops over time, something he can feel at his fingertips. All this throwing a pizza in the air and the twirling it around, nothing but theatrics. Circus games for tourists. Here, we're serious about maintaining tradition. These days, the traditions are still carried on. More often than not, patrons will enjoy a pizza with the sounds of traditional street songs played near the sidewalk tables, standing on the same cobblestone street. Above, billow flags of nations, and nearby rests a plaque commemorating that 100 years ago, here, the pizza margarita was made. Reporting from the Brandy Pizzeria in downtown Naples, I'm Air Force Sergeant Gary Piccarillo, AFN News. If you're wondering how you can make a simple, great-tasting pizza, we're going to move down the peninsula now to the island of Sicily. There we get a lesson on the fine art of cooking Italian food. It's one of those jobs that sometimes falls on military spouses. Many have to find new ways to adapt from one location to the next. And Naval Air Station Siganella's Intercultural Relations Department has a fun way to do just that. Petty Officer John Harrington's going to show us how. Chocolate pan, parsley for you. Family support sponsored Italian cooking classes give SERS members better halves a chance to put more than just recipes in their pockets. We have this uh, cooking class because it offers the spouses 
an excellent tool to adapt to this new culture and also a wonderful opportunity to, to make friends. And then he has added rice. We've um, found some great restaurants and then we've been able to go back with our own families um, that have, aren't able to come during the week. Um, met some great new people that come to the cooking class. <laughs> and um, then get to go home and share the dishes with our families at home and get to take them back to the States with us someday. I like it when others come here to see me work because they can understand something about our culinary culture. Teaching is always a little harder because I am the only one. This is the significance of teaching. Okay. They love to interact with the Americans because for them it's also learning the new culture. It's like having it under a different perspective, like having Italians and now also having Americans so they can maybe compare and see the difference in behaviors. Classes like this give American service members and their families a new opportunity to see a different side of a new culture. In fact, the class is so popular that many of the participants keep coming back time and time again. I have been on the island for three years and I have gone on almost every cooking class that the Family Service Center has had. <laughs> Reporting from AFN Siganella. <laughs> I'm Petty Officer John Harrington. Complimenti. Very good. Very good. The Intercultural Relations Department has classes all year round for interested cooks. And as we wrap up another edition of Destinations this evening, we're going to move back up the Italian peninsula to Rome. This look at shopping in the city comes to us from the Command Information Department at AFN Vicenza. Thanks for joining us tonight, everyone. It's always good to see you here. And remember to catch us next week as we go on the road with the Frankfurt Galaxy in a Destinations exclusive, Destination Barcelona. Let's